Welcome to the plenary lecture to be delivered by Dr. V. Narayan. It is my proud privilege to introduce my good friend, Dr. Narayan, who is the speaker of this plenary lecture. Dr. V. Narayan is a distinguished scientist in the Indian Space Research Organization. He is currently the director of Liquid Propulsion System Center, one of the main R&D centers of ISRO. Dr. Narayan is an alumnus of IIT Kharagpur, and he received MTech degree in cryogenic engineering in the year 1989. Later, he was awarded PhD in Aerospace Engineering by IIT Kharagpur in 2001. He received a silver medal for first rank in MTech, and later in 2018, he was a recipient of Distinguished Alumnus Award by IIT Kharagpur. At the LPAC, Dr. Narayan has provided leadership in the development of liquid, semi-cryogenic, and cryogenic propulsion stages for launch vehicles. He has also immensely contributed to chemical and electrical propulsion systems for satellites, control systems for vehicles, and tra transfuse development for launch vehicle health monitoring. As product, uh, for project director for C25 cryogenic stage powered by a 20 ton cryogenic engine using liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellant, he played a vital role in the successful launch of the GSW Mark III vehicle in its maiden attempt on June 5, 2017. He also significantly contributed to the cryogenic upper stage CUS engine as a part of the GSW Mark II vehicle. He guided the design team for the 200 ton thrust LOX kerosene semi cryogenic rocket engine. He has been instrumental in preparing the roadmap for liquid rocket engine activities at ISRO. For Chandrayaan 2 mission, his team delivered the L110 liquid core stage and the C25 cryogenic stage. They also developed the Arbiter Vikram lander, including throttleable thrusters for soft landing under Dr. Narayan's guidance. Dr. Narayan has received a large number of awards. He received a gold medal from the Astronautical Society of India, ASI an ASA award for rocket and related technologies development, team award from the High Energy Materials Society of India, MC, and performance excellence and team excellence awards from ISRO. He was awarded honorary degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, from Satyabama University, Chennai. Dr. Narayan is a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering, INAE, member of Space Protection Committee of International Astronautical Federation, IAF, corresponding member of International Academy of uh, Aeron Astronautics, uh, Aeronautics Society of India, uh, yeah, Fellow of Institute of Engineers, Fellow of Indian Cryogenic Council, Fellow of Astronautic, Aeronautical Society of India, Member of INAE Governing Council, and Member of various international and national professional body. Dr. Narayan has published a large number of technical papers in international as well as na Indian national journals. I invite the eminent scientist Dr. Narayanan for delivering a plenary lecture on liquid propulsion technologies. Yes, sir. Is it audible, sir? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for that brief introduction. Uh, it is my great, I consider it as a great privilege to be part of this uh, very, very important uh, conference, Heat and Mass Transfer Conference, organized by Indian Society of Society for Heat and Mass Transfer in association with American Society of Thermal and Fluid Engineers. That too, uh, I consider again as a great privilege. Uh, the, this session is chaired by None other than my very, very close friend and one of the well-wisher of ISRO activities and a great contributor for our propulsion development, Professor Sundar Rajan. Let me thank the organizers at the outset for giving me this great uh, honor and opportunity to share a couple of my views uh, with this distinguished audience on this wonderful morning. With this, uh, let me go to my uh, talk. Can you open the slide? So I will be sharing with you the uh, couple of aspects related to thermal and fluid flow challenges in the space program, mainly Indian space program. Uh, the, uh, in fact, thermal and fluid flow challenges are we are very, very key. The, the thermal and fluid flow engineers, they play a very, very key role in the entire space activity. So it will be very difficult to cover all the activities in 45 minutes. You all will agree with me. But some of the important aspects I will try to share with you. As you uh, most of you are aware, it was in the year 1962, the Indian National Committee for Space Research was formed. And uh, it was the vision of Dr. Sarabhai, who, is, who strongly felt that the application of advanced technologies uh, should be used for the real problems of man and society. With that vision, the ISRO uh, activities were, rather the space activities were started in this country. And we had a first, uh, a tiny rocket launch uh, in 1963, 21st November 1963, 
from Thad's uh, Kumbha in uh, Thiruvananthapuram. From that, uh, during the last six decades, we have come a long way and today the organization is serving uh, in a great way uh, in all respects uh, for the citizens of this country. Uh, in fact, when we talk about uh, uh, bringing the space application to the common man, you all will agree with me. What we need is uh, uh, space infrastructure, uh, basically satellites. And we also need uh, launch vehicles for place them in the required orbit, orbit and the ground segments for utilizing the satellite data for multiple, uh, for various purposes. And in fact, in ISRO, all these activities started concurrently. And uh, now, uh, from 1960 to almost 60 years, uh, we are coming a long way. Uh, now, if you see the total accomplishments of ISRO, till today, we have accomplished 196 missions, which includes 79 launch vehicle missions. In fact, to our credit, today we are having uh, three operational vehicles, uh, PSLV, GSLV, and GSLV Mark III. Prior to that, we had two experimental vehicles, uh, SLV-3 and ASLV, which was developed, and we land the launch vehicle uh, technology uh, in total. From that, uh, today, to our credit, we are having three, uh, three operational launch vehicles. In addition to that, we are also having the Rogani sounding rocket program. In fact, uh, something around 3,500 sounding rockets are till today launched from 1963 and uh, 79 launch vehicle missions and 112 uh, satellite uh, missions and five experimental missions are uh, launched. And we have also launched 342 satellites of 34 countries and 12 student satellites. And uh, the, when you talk about the satellite program, we have uh, launched a variety of satellites, including remote sensing satellites, communication satellite, navigation satellites, and scientific uh, uh, missions, satellites for scientific missions we have launched and five important experimental uh, missions, which includes the space capsule recovery experiment, crew module atmospheric re-entry ex experiment, and we have also demonstrated the scramjet engine uh, technology and reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrated, we have uh, demonstrated, and as part of the human space flight program, we also had a flight of crew escape system demonstration. We had a flight. So these are all the major accomplishments we have made, and with this, uh, today, I will say that the uh, Department of Space has touched the life of every common man of this uh, country in multiple areas, let it be telecommunication, uh, tele-education, telemedicine, uh, the remote sensing, resource management, multiple and multiple navigation, multiple areas we have touched the life of the common man. Now, when you uh, talk about the role of thermal and fluid flow applications, in fact, a couple of days I was uh, reading uh, the lot of things. I understood the entire space program is only the thermal and fluid flow. Uh, uh, people have played the crucial role. Rather, when you look at the launch vehicle today, I am seeing, I am totally, my mind says that most of the activities are thermal and fluid flow activities only. That's what I feel. Now, I have given uh, the major details. I am not going to read this. In the launch vehicle area, you know, the lot of uh, activities are involved with respect to thermal and fluid flow aerothermal design, thermostructural analysis, aerocombustion, of course, propulsion area, uh, the thermal and fluid flow uh, engineers have to play a very, very crucial role. Then comes to spacecraft. Uh, spacecraft, when it is in the launch pad, of course, a lot of uh, thermal aspects are involved and in the deep space in environment, uh, things has to work. So again, here, thermal and fluid flow applications plays a very, very major role. And launch pad, when the vehicle takes off from the launch pad, a lot of aspects are involved with respect to thermal and fluid flow. And when you talk about the testing and qualifications of both the launch vehicle systems, uh, let it be propulsion or structures and uh, the aerodynamic aspects, again, a uh, lot of activities are involved with respect to thermal and fluid flow aspects. Now we have taken up the human space flight program. Already Honorable Prime Minister has announced and we are in the advanced stage of development of the system. This area also, a lot of applications are there. I will cover a couple of things in my talk. Now, first I will go through the, the applications in the cryogenic propulsion uh, system area. In this area, I want to say, Professor Sundarajan has, was part and partial of us, and he has also heavily contributed in a lot of aspects. Not only Professor Sundarajan, uh, uh, in fact, IIT Chennai, uh, we are having, we are drawing really expertise from all the academic institutes, but IIT Chennai has really played a very, very crucial role in our program. Now, coming to the propulsion, uh, ISRO has mastered uh, 
uh, all the propulsion systems today i will say solid estuarable liquid cryogenic propulsion uh, every area we have mastered now coming to the cryogenic propulsion to our credit we have developed two indigenous cryogenic uh, propulsion system one for gsl mark 2 vehicle another one for gsl mark 3 vehicle now in the cryogenic propulsion system as you are aware we use liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as the propellant and uh, that is the propellant combination chemical propulsion which gives the highest or the, rather the best performance so because of that we use now when it comes to uh, the role of thermal and fluid flow uh, system team number one it starts from the design the, rather the conceiving the system itself they have to play a crucial role now one example i will tell when hydrogen oxygen combustion takes place it generates a temperature of something around 3400 to 3500 kelvin so the thermal design of the combustion chamber is very very crucial because the, uh, we have to handle a heat flux in the order of maximum uh, 50 to 50 to uh, 60 megawatt per meter square is the type of heat flux which has to be handled so the design of the combustion chamber basically it is a double walled combustion chamber regeneratively cooled and this uh, in fact i will say our ce20 engine something around 200 configurations we had to study before finalizing the configuration so uh, in which we have to understand the basically the heat transfer aspect we have to ensure the safe wall temperature in fact we are having a inner shell with thickness less than 1 mm uh, with that only we can have the required heat transfer to handle this type of heat flux and then of course the pressure drop uh, should be as minimum and we have to do a conjugate analysis both thermal and fluid flow analysis have to be carried out in pleasing the configuration and design of the engine system now next aspect is uh, you know the hydrogen oxygen mixture is a non hypercolic system so we need to have uh, igniters for initiating the combustion but then the mounting location of the igniters and the ignition energy optimization of the ignition energy and understanding because initially we admit uh, hydrogen and oxygen will be admitted and the things will be very much low flow rate with less uh, velocity and movement of ratios and we have to really understand how the ignition is going to take place uh, that aspect has to be thoroughly analyzed and understood then only even we authorize the, we develop the igniters and we go authorize the test program and go ahead because in the hydrogen oxygen combustion if uh, if things are not properly done it will end up with the explosive situation so we have to be very careful so we have carried out extensive studies uh, in terms of igniter optimization cfd studies were carried out to understand the ignition zones and the mounting location of the igniters were uh, uh, finalized now coming to uh, you know the the uh, this engine is a turbo pump fed engine and there are there is a turbine uh, which is driving the pumping pump system hydrogen and oxygen pumps are driven by a turbine and we generate hot gas with something around 800 kelvin in a system called gas generator and using that hot gas the turbine is driven now the the hot gas is generated again by hydrogen oxygen mixture with a very low mixture ratio mixture ratio in the order of 0.8 and uh, theoretically one can prove with 0.8 we cannot ignite uh, but then we initiate we have got a novel method of initiating the the initiation initiating the ignition what we do is the even the global mixture ratio is 0.8 and we generate local mixture ratio much higher in the order of 6 to 8 basically through the injector the hydrogen is entering and oxygen is injected in such a way that the locally uh, the mixture ratio will be high and there we initiate the ignition process here also lot of optimization study was done and cfd study was done to understand the ignition process another one is yes we do the ground test and of course the, in the flight we are having deep vacuum environment of course we are also we also build up vacuum facilities but then before authorizing the hot test another thing to understand the safe ignition we have carried out extensive uh, studies rather cfd and combustion studies to understand the ignitability and ignition characteristics then only we have gone and we have authorized the test now another important aspect is the combustion uh, per se uh, the we are having liquid oxygen and gaseous hydrogen is injected into the combustion chamber so what is the type of atomization process how the combustion phenomena itself takes place and what type of boundary layer it will generate and what type of heat flux we have to handle all these things has to be understood and plus the combustion stability aspect also we have analyzed and another aspect is the combustion and nozzle efficiency theoretical estimation 
that needs a strong understanding of uh, strong role of uh, fluid flow and combustion analysis uh, are required and then heat transfer and uh, this aspect also we have carried out extensive studies another thing is uh, you know the hydrogen and oxygen is stored in the tank from there before starting the engine system the entire the pumping you know, pumps has to be pumped and the feed system has to be chilled to the required temperature and it is a very very involved job actually in the flight after the flight lift of the tone in uh, another 200 to 300 second the uh, rear engine is igniting so within that time it is very difficult to chill the system so we are having multiple phase of chilling even before lift off itself we chill the system to some level of 45 to 50 kelvin in the hydrogen circuit oxygen circuit something around 100 kelvin we chill and this entire transient heat transfer model we have generated to understand the chilling process in case if the system is not chilled even the uh, the we cannot uh, do the engine operation properly and the the fluid flow also if the hydrogen oxygen flow also if the quantity is higher there will be a problem if it is lower there will be problem so we have to optimize the chill down flow rate so to understand the entire phenomenon of the chilling process lot of thermal studies are carried out in fact we have also drawn expertise from academic institutes we have carried out a conjugate transient thermal model and with that uh, of course one is uh, thermal as well, the modeling aspect another one is experimentation so we have carried out experiment validated the model finally we have honored with the program and another aspect is when you design the engine system the thermostructural design is very very important because when you talk about this is the model of fe model of the ce20 cryogenic engine uh, one side the hydrogen pump has to handle the 20 kelvin hydrogen temperature oxygen has to pump has to handle 90 kelvin temperature and there is a turbine uh, which has to handle 800 to 500 kelvin that type of temperature combustion uh, chamber around 3500 is the uh, combustion product temperature now now when when you design the uh, engine system first one has to do a detailed thermal analysis to capture the thermal profile at different uh, locations then that is a essential requirement for carrying out the design of the system uh, the thermostructural design and analysis of the system this is really a very very involved and very very complicated job because uh, the, here also we have to carry out the transient phase what are all the things happening when initially we admit hydrogen oxygen what is the type of thermal profile during steady state what is happening then everything has to be analyzed so here also the thermal and fluid flow team that played a very very crucial role in carrying out the design and analysis now when you come to the engine testing and qualification it is another important aspect and of course this, these engines have to work in the deep space environment so to qualify the engine and demonstrate the performance in the high altitude condition we have built up a huge high altitude facility uh, which can handle a propellant flow rate of 45 kg per second and basically this high altitude facility is generated which generates a required vacuum level of deep to vacuum level and uh, the and initially we generate the vacuum and when the engine starts uh, the entire system uh, pressures are maintained by a ejector system nitrogen ejector system and then again the entire facility design involves a conjugate uh, fluid flow analysis basically a transient analysis required it is in this area professor sundarajan and his team has contributed heavily for our program and so much almost some 300 400 simulations were carried out to understand the transient phenomena how when the engine starts how the facility and the engine has to be getting wedded together and the facility has to meet the entire requirement otherwise we will end up with the great uh, setbacks and in fact one is uh, uh, the maintaining the vacuum another thing is when the 45 kg per second of uh, the uh, propellant or rather the hot gas is uh, to be pumped by the ejector system the entire thermal aspect uh, basically the cooling we have to do the cooling so we are having multiple uh, ways of uh, cooling uh, basically there is a double walled uh, dump cooling with water uh, something around 1700 kg per second water is used and we also spray water inside to reduce the temperature of uh, the uh, the hot gas which is coming out to handle the entire thermal system this is uh, just i have put in one slide but the work involved was more than four to five years extensive uh, work was carried out and to our credit we could successfully accomplish the hard test without any setback in the first attempt itself 
uh, that shows the maturity of the really the CFD analysis, the thermal analysis which was carried out, and to build the uh, facility and the, um, the engine as an integrated system. Really extensive work has been done, and we got the success in the first attempt itself. Now today, our facility is in fully operational condition. Now another aspect is when you do the engine with the sea level test stand, a couple of important aspects are involved. Number one. You know, in the hydrogen oxygen, uh, this one, hydrogen oil is also used as a coolant. So, as per the sequence of operation, first we admit hydrogen and establish the required hydrogen for it. Then, otherwise, the, uh, I mean, open the, uh, the, I mean, we switch on the igniter, then admit oxygen. During this time, what will happen is, in the test and this shows the nozzle exit, there will be hydrogen accumulation at the nozzle exit. Now, if it is not properly handled, it can lead to explosive situation and uh, damage to the facility and hardware. So what we do is, we purge nitrogen at the nozzle exit and move the hydrogen little away. And uh, so that when the ignition takes place, this uh, explosive, uh, explosive mixture will not be sitting below the engine system. So this area also, extensive studies uh, carried out uh, to understand how much quantity of nitrogen required, where we have to pump, what is the type of velocity at which it has to be pumped, and where this uh, hydrogen-oxygen mixture will stay back with this type of situation. Whether, because fully we cannot dilute with the pumping nitrogen, that is huge quantity of nitrogen. So we have to move away from the nozzle exit. So extensive studies carried out, extensive uh, party studies as well as uh, flame propagation studies were carried out in this area. Then only we have gone ahead with the test program. Another, another aspect, is when you test a high area ratio nozzle in the sea level, you know there is a flow separation and associated problems. And we have developed a nozzle protection system, thereby we pump nitrogen as well as water in the nozzle exit, which moves up to the flow separation plane and reduces the vibration level and handle the heat transfer aspect. Here also extensive study, uh, again CFD, thermal uh, analysis, everything is carried out and we have developed this system and today we are put into use, successfully we are using the system. Now, when you come to the propellant storage in the tank, uh, this is the cryo stage oxygen, the, uh, this is the hydrogen tank, this is the oxygen tank. When you store hydrogen is at 20 Kelvin, oxygen at 90 Kelvin and the propellant has to be, you have to ensure required thermal condition, required temperature conditions in the tank till the end of the flight, for that we have developed a multi-layer insulation. And to optimize the insulation and its thickness, everything, again, extensive uh, studies were carried out. Uh, and another phenomena what takes place is when there is heat transfer into the, uh, into the tank, there will be thermal stratification, leading to the warm hydrogen or oxygen uh, moving from the surface to the top and it will be getting accumulated there will be stratified layer and this propellant will become a unuseful propellant. Of course, up to some level we can use, but the entire quantity we cannot use. So this needs thorough analysis and experiment. Uh, basically, again, a thermal team has to play a very, very crucial role in understanding the entire tank internal process. What is the type of heat transfer, heat and mass transfer taking place and what type of thermal stratification and how much it will get accumulated in time. Again, entire thing is a transient process. And this area also extensive work is done. And of course, we have also carried out the experimentation to understand and validate our thermal model, thermal and fluid flow models. Now, you know, the tank in which we store the propellant, this has to be pressurized uh, to the required level. And when you do the pressurization again, you cannot, we have to optimize the entire tank pressurization schemes. For example, in the case of hydrogen uh, tank, we take hydrogen, which is used as the regenerative coolant for the chamber, that itself will take and but of course that uh, temperature is something around uh, 90 Kelvin is the coolant outlet temperature and we heat it to something around 200 to 250 Kelvin in a heat exchanger and we heat and then we pump the hydrogen into the tank. Again, the type of uh, uh, the quantity of pressure and requirement and type of heat transfer, interface heat transfer, what is going to take place uh, between the, uh, the pressure and to the, uh, the fluid inside the tank and the heat exchanger design and the entire thing involves again a huge role by the th thermal team and same way in the oxygen side we use uh, helium gas uh, for uh, the pressurization system and we also use a portion of the helium uh, we bubble through the bottom uh, to optimize the pressure and the requirement so all these things involves 
extensive theoretical and experimental studies now when you come as a integrated stage which involves which includes the tank propellant tank hydrogen tank oxygen tank and inter tank structure and the engine system when you do as per the design the entire system the we have to carry out detailed thermostructural analysis and ensure required flexibilities and ensure required mounting conditions ensure required routing of the feed lines and and all other circuits so for that we have to do a extensive thermostructural analysis first and foremost is as part of the filling process we fill the oxygen tank first then fill the hydrogen tank so the system will experience different thermal environments and we have to capture the thermal environment at different phases of servicing operation and flight conditions and here again the extensive study has to be done thermal study has to be done to understand then only the design of the structural design can be completed so this area also extensive work has been done and now we are in the process of developing a semi cryogenic engine with a 200 ton thrust uh, engine and the engine is operating on a stage combustion cycle with 180 bar combustion chamber pressure and the entire system level if you see again it is a uh, pumped i mean the, it is a pumped engine and the oxygen pump delivery pressure goes to a level of 650 bar to meet a uh, 180 bar chamber pressure so this development is already going on in the advanced stage and towards this engine development also extensive work has to be done by the thermal team for example the entire combustion chamber we are using multiple scheme of uh, cooling regenerative cooling dump cooling then the film cooling all these aspects are uh, combined together and it is carried out again another important aspect with uh, here is the kerosene is used as the regenerative cooling kerosene you know that 570 kelvin is the coking limit so when you do the thermal analysis uh, we have to ensure at none of the place the temperature the, uh, the kerosene uh, exceeds a temperature of 570 in fact we have to put enough margin we limit it to somewhere on 400 kelvin uh, otherwise the it will uh, the coking uh, it will cross the coking limit and leading to again associated problem another important aspect is the suit formation and uh, if uh, the kerosene uh, uh, kerosene of course it is a refined kerosene not ordinary commercial kerosene but even then a lot of suit formation will occur and if the suit form formed then it will lead to uh, inefficient cooling and inefficient combustion performance and reduced life cycle of the chamber all these things will happen so this aspect also one has to be careful and one has to study and another thing is unlike cryo engine the semi cryo engine worldwide combustion stability problem people have faced very seriously so this area also we have carried out extensive studies uh, to understand the combustion stability related aspects and of course acoustic analysis flame stability analysis and uh, with all other things we have also designed the system to ensure stable operation of the engine system now the ignition again ignition of the semi cryogenic engine where oxygen unlike hydrogen oxygen here the ignition is a very very tricky affair so we are using a hypercolic slag and the, from the slag we are also putting you can see uh, it is uh, injected like a jet in multiple locations to ensure the ignition is uh, initiated so this area also extensive study mainly fluid flow analysis cfd analysis is carried out now when you do uh, come to the test stand uh, when you this is a test stand what we are developing for semi cryogenic engine uh, this is the engine uh, bay this is the stage bay and something around 650 kg per second uh, hot gas is going to come out of the engine system because it is a 200 ton engine and uh, there is a flame deflector which has to handle we are pumping almost uh, more than 1100 kg per second of water is pumped to cool the flame deflector again the finalizing the configuration of the flame deflector and the entire system so much extensive theoretical studies both fluid flow and thermal analysis carried out and we have finally picked up a configuration of the uh, flame deflector fit right now the commissioning activity is going on in iprc mahendrari but we are sure with our past experience uh, the system will surely work and we are having adequate margin uh, in the coolant uh, flow rate but only thing the, in the right location we have to pump the flow uh, of the uh, water with the right velocity and the situation we have to pump so all these studies we have carried out in fact some experiments also we have carried out to validate our models and another uh, currently we are working on a new technology lox methane engine development in fact we have uh, developed a 20 ton uh, technology demonstrator engine 
and we have carried out the six hard tests uh, uh, to understand the various technologies associated with that. But before authorizing the test, extensive studies uh, were carried out in the area of ignition, stable combustion, the cooling aspects, the chill down characteristics. All these things we have done the studies and today uh, we have successfully carried out six hard tests. And of course, this data will be used for designing the high thrust uh, large methane engine system. And coming to the restorable engine, uh, we are having uh, uh, the, yeah, the for our uh, program, a yeah, Vigas engine generating 80 ton thrust for this is the work cost of ISRO. We are using uh, in the second stage this engine, uh, PSLV second stage and GSLV Mark 2 and Mark 3 also, these engines are used. Here also, um, uh, it is having ablative throat insert and film cooled combustion chamber, radiation cooled nozzle diversion, and of course, uh, the, all this involves uh, detailed uh, thermal and fluid flow analysis and studies. In fact, initially we were having the low thrust engine, now we, are we have enhanced the thrust level, almost 78% we have enhanced the thrust level. And when you go higher and higher thrust level, of, of course, we have carried out extensive uh, combustion stability analysis. And in fact, we also changed the propellant combination based on the uh, studies. Uh, little we have changed from UDMH to UH25. And this area also, extensive uh, involvement is there by the uh, thermal and fluid flow team. And this is the combustion chamber of the Vigas engine. Uh, basically, uh, we are having a throat insert made up of silica of nalik and uh, this throat is bonded with the uh, combustion chamber. Now, uh, one thing will happen when the, uh, here, this is the injector area and uh, the, during the operation, uh, there will be, because of the differential thermal contractions uh, of the systems, there will be, uh, we used to face a problem. This is the silica of nalik bonded with uh, the, uh, the chamber uh, with cement and there used to be opening and uh, sometimes hard gas or entry also we have seen. And now uh, we have totally overcome the problem. Uh, small stagnant gas doesn't have great uh, problem for the engine, but if there is a huge quantity of entry and for this one, then there will be even uh, setbacks for the engine. So extensive uh, study is carried out in this area. Uh, the coupled fluid flow and thermal analysis carried out uh, to overcome the problem and to solve the problems and to ensure the proper operation of the engine system. And we are having we have also developed a pressure-fed engine system uh, for the fourth stage of PSL. In fact, we are using two engines of each 7.35 kN thrust level. And uh, again, this is working on MAN3 and MMH propellant combination uh, with a mixture ratio of 1.6 to 1.4. And here also, again, similar studies are carried out um, to optimize the film cooling and to understand the nozzle. <clears throat> it is a, a nozzle performance and the regenerative cooled uh, uh, the combustion chamber performance. So much study is carried out. Now, we have from in ISRO, uh, we have demonstrated, we are in the process of development of the air breathing engine system. We have, demo we have demonstrated uh, a, the uh, spamjet, uh, this one and supersonic combustion uh, in a hypersonic flight was demonstrated for a short duration using hydrogen as the fuel. You know, the demonstrating the um, uh, supersonic combustion is very, very tricky job. And that too, first attempt itself, uh, ISRO could uh, successfully demonstrate. And then towards that, uh, you know, the air is entering with a high Mach number and uh, initiating the ignition and sustaining the combustion. At that Mach number, very high Mach number is a very, very tricky job. And extensive studies were carried out uh, with respect to the air entry, and the type of Mach number distribution, type of pressure and velocity distribution, and how to, where we have to really inject the fuel and how the flame is going to be sustained. All these studies were carried out before authorizing the program. And uh, to our credit, uh, in the first attempt itself, uh, successfully we could demonstrate uh, in the flights. Now, uh, further we are into the program. Now, earlier we demonstrated very short time. Now we are going to have a lengthy, a flight uh, with uh, um, I mean high thrust to drag uh, ratio and 250 seconds we are planning to demonstrate again the scramjet propulsion system and here uh, we have selected kerosene as the fuel uh, and of course the combustion chamber is a square I mean the rectangular cross section which is going to be regeneratively cooled kerosene will be used as a regenerative coolant before it enters into the uh, engine uh, I'm getting injected into the engine system again here. 
uh, the one is related to the initiation of the combustion another one is sustaining the flame and sustaining the this one another aspect is when it just work for long duration the entire thermal analysis and the cooling aspect so extensive work has gone and uh, right now we are in the process of uh, realizing the hardware and we will be having very shortly the flight program and in the solid area of course so we have come a long way in fact isro has mastered the solid propulsion to our credit variety of solid motors are there including the 207 ton propellant loading uh, for the solid motor what uh, two motors we are using in our mark uh, mark 3 program in fact unlike other countries we had uh, you only static tested two motors and we authorized the uh, flight program and uh, really the isro team has got very strong base and we have mastered the solid propulsion uh, system and towards the solid propulsion system i think i need not explain to this audience extensive uh, work is uh, to be done by the thermal and fluid flow uh, experts the flow field analysis velocity and pressure field inside the motor and pressure drop along the motor which dictates the, to some level the nozzle performance and estimation of the heat flux uh, on the propellant and uh, because the, uh, the uh, combustion is taking place inside the core and what is the type of heat flux to the propellant and the thermal protection system design and optimization this area one has to really do extensive studies and of course velocity filter to various joints and gap region and estimation of heat flux on inhibition and insulation walls so this is another important area then coming to the nozzle contour optimization and stylization to get the best performance this is another important area the study was carried out and again the nozzle system is made up of it is ablative nozzle system again the thermal design of the ablative nozzle Uh, the, what is the type of thickness required? What is the type of charring? Which what is going to happen? What is the, the left out virgin material? What will be the type of back wall temperature? Of course, we have to maintain the required back wall temperature. So towards that, extensive uh, studies are required. Not only one motor, all the motors. This has to be done, and this is done. And another important aspect when you think about uh, the high performance and uh, huge loading motor is water shedding due to protrusion of inhibitions. Uh, there, it can induce pressure and thrust oscillation. so this area also extensive cfd studies carried out to capture the magnitude and frequency of oscillation to understand the uh, the characteristics of the motor so extensive studies carried out again we are having a flux seal nozzle system uh, for uh, the vehicle uh, all the time and vehicle control so the extensive cfd studies also carried out to assess the non uniform erosion behavior when the motor is uh, the nozzle is uh, submerged into the motor system Uh, what is the type of erosion which is taking place differential erosion at different locations and of course the aluminum particle impingement also will happen so extensive studies are carried out uh, successfully and uh, today uh, the i am happy to report that uh, really we are having very very validated software for this type of analysis and when you come to the launch vehicle as a whole uh, i think uh, extensive uh, work has to be carried out with respect to thermal and fluid flow Uh, for example you take the pre launch phase there will be solar heating and convective heat transfer uh, from the ambient and uh, at different various uh, areas again the heat flux will vary and lift off uh, phase there will be radiation from solid particles uh, basically the propellant uh, system uh, which is uh, the solid particle coming out as the exhaust uh, of the solid uh, motors and there will be convective heat transfer uh, and during the ascent ascent phase again aerodynamic heating and heat flux uh, from other aspects uh, heating uh, due to the reverse flow in that upper atmosphere all these things uh, needs extensive studies both uh, you know, fluid flow and the uh, heat transfer studies are required again when you talk about re entry phase again the total trick is different the total aspect is different the aerodynamic heating will be different and the system the, the system has to really and the system has to the re, during the entry phase re entry phase the heat transfer aspects will be going on varying with respect to altitude so extensive studies are required in these areas now when you take a launch vehicle uh, when i am standing as a thermal and fluid flow system person i am looking the entire work is done by only uh, this team uh, that is the feeling i am getting because you know with respect to compartment venting in the payload fairing uh, then of course uh, one aspect i want to tell uh, there is a Heat shield, the payload firing, and during the atmospheric region, uh, we are having the cryogenic tank. There will be heat leak into the cryogenic tank because of the 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 the, the type of reattachment. What is happening? 
the type of uh, aerodynamics what is happening there will be heat in leak that is causing that is what is deciding dictating the pressure rise uh, required for the engine starting so this area extensive study has to be done then of course uh, uh, with respect to our lower stage we are having l1 stage again there we are storing the propellant little lower than the atmospheric uh, this one so we need to have a thermal insulation then of course the entire aerodynamic uh, and uh, other aspect of the vehicle itself has to be thoroughly studied yeah. now another one important aspect what i want to address to this audience is the base heating when you talk about the base heating uh, when the vehicle lifts off uh, there will be the radiative heat heat transfer because uh, if you see we are our uh, the mark 3 we are having two solid motor at the time of lift off so both solid motor will be um, uh, firing and it is lifting off and the center we are having a l1 four stage now there will be radiative heat transfer because of aluminum oxide uh, a2o3 particles there will be radiative heat transfer and there will be the nozzle which will be at uh, hot temperature from there again there will be radiative heat transfer and when multiple jets are coming there will be jet interaction and there can be river, there there will be reverse flow so to take care of all these things uh, uh, we have to thoroughly study based on the cfd analysis we have to understand what type of uh, reverse flow is taking place what type of heat transfer is going to occur then we have to protect all the system including the vehicle control system uh, so uh, the base heating study is a very very important and crucial study uh, for uh, optimizing the system and ensure safe operation of the the total vehicle system then another right. aspect then you wind up in few minutes and summarization yes, sir maybe another 5 to 7 minutes yeah. 5 minutes right. yeah another important aspect is uh, when you uh, at the time of vehicle lift off heavy acoustics will be generated so we are having acoustic suppression system in fact i want to say 20 tons per second of water is uh, pumped to reduce the acoustic level to a level of 5 db we want to reduce so for that so much has to be done and the extensive studies carried out in this area again aerodynamic studies uh, for uh, understanding the vehicle loads to finalize the vehicle trajectory we have to carry out and this uh, is done and of course when you talk about the uh, type of heat flux what is experienced by the vehicle uh, for a normal vehicle it is something around in the order of 5.3 watt per centimeter square 3 to 5 whereas for a space recovery experiment what we carried out it went to a level of 300 watt per centimeter square so all these things uh, has to be done studied uh, uh, theoretically to increase the insulation requirements of course when it comes to rlv again the requirements are totally different mm -hmm. Uh, I think when it comes to satellites, again, uh, the, uh, we have to carry out, uh, you know, the satellite uh, in the launch particle experience, solar heating and post convective heat transfer. And in the deep space, uh, there will be a lot of, uh, it has to work for almost 10 to 15 years and uh, it will experience different thermal environment. So the entire satellite system, we have to carry out conjugate analysis, thermal and fluid flow analysis uh, to ensure the safe operation of the satellites uh, during the, its operation. One slide I want to show, this is the our Chandrayaan-2 lander system in which we have used multiple engines for the landing. When multiple engines are there, uh, there will be plume interaction. When this plume interaction, that study has to be done and what is the effect and what is the type of insulation we have to do. This is one aspect. Second thing is, when the landing is occurring, uh, the plumes will impinge on the lunar surface and there will be dust formation. And if the dust comes and settles on the solar panel, it will lead to problem. So this area also extends to theoretical and experimental studies we have carried out. Now we are in the Gaganian program and uh, in which we are taking the, uh, we, with our own human rated Mark 3 vehicle, we are going to take uh, three crew, uh, I mean our crew to the orbit. Uh, of course the launch vehicle will take to some level 140 to 170 kilometers. From there we are having orbital unit system, we are having required propulsion system. So the propulsion system will take it to 400 kilometer and we will keep the crew, of course, the three to five days, we are going to keep the crew in that orbit and we are going to then take them back safely. And when the system, orbital system comes to something around 120, uh, uh, 170 to 120 kilometers, uh, the, uh, the orbital module has got a crew, a crew model and a service model, this will be separated and uh, then the uh, uh, the crew module will be uh, coming down and something around uh, 7 to 8 kilometer parachute will be opened and then the crew will be uh, landing. And during the entire process, extensive uh, studies because fully aerodynamics 
and then the thermal analysis really a very we have to carry out extensive studies and this is one slide i have shown the service model we are having multiple engines using multiple engines we are taking the crew to the required orbit of 400 km and we are keeping them safely there and uh, extensive study is carried out to understand the jet um, uh, interaction of the jets and what is the type of recirculation what type of heat transfer which is going to take place what type of protection you have to give all these studies are done then of course uh, the crew model itself when it is re entering the type of flow field everything has to be carried out study has to be carried out and then we finalize the insulation and uh, whatever is required to uh, handle uh, the safety of the crew uh, of course uh, another thing is we are having a system uh, for crew escape system in case of any anomaly uh, during any phase of the launch vehicle uh, the crew escape system is having fast planning motors Uh, which will be operated and the crew will be taken to the safe location to finalize the configuration of crew escape system multiple configurations were carried out by extensive cfd studies and finally we have picked up the right configuration now coming to another important aspect is when the crew is inside uh, they are we have roughly estimated the total heat load is something around 2 kilowatt uh, out of which 50 percentage is contributed from the avionic system it is generated by the avionic system 20% because of the crew metabolism and something on 30% from the environmental control system other aspects of the control system including electronics packages so we have to ensure uh, a temperature and with the required relative humidity and temperature has to be maintained you know, 300 kelvin we have to maintain with this type of heat loads what is coming and the systems have to be designed and we have to carry out extensive we have carried out extensive analysis and we have finalized all the system right now the hardware realization is going on and of course uh, Uh, this is a very very important aspect i have put only one slide but the work involved is so huge you know, to handle to understand this aspect and ensure the safety of the crew and uh, now coming to uh, i am coming to my summary part you know today as i told we are having two we had two experimental vehicle slv3 and aslv and to our credit today three operation vehicles are there and then the mark 3 we are going to do the human rating of the mark 3 vehicle and the mark 3 vehicle again Uh, inducting a semi cryo stage and a and the, high, the more propellant c25 enhanced c25 stage we call it as a c32 stage we are going to take the propellant i mean uh, the payload to port to python these are all approved program now the semi cryogenic engine development when it is uh, uh, in fact for improving the mark 3 payload we are going to induct the semi cryo engine plus c32 cryo stage subsequently we are also having plans these are all in the study rather than the, i will say drawing board in the heavy thrust uh, the heavy lift launch vehicle and super heavy lift uh, launch vehicle with the different configuration we are studying and of course to meet that lot of propulsion system right now our capability s200 motor solid motor we are also thinking s250 or 300 s300 motor development and uh, the clustering of the semi cryo engine a yeah, 200 ton engine we are developing whether we can cluster uh, four of them to get a 800 ton thrust then we are also in the process of studying the recovery of the stages so for the deep uh, throttling aspects we are studying and green propulsion uh, for the human space flight program is one of the development which is taking place and of course electric propulsion system that area i have not addressed but there also lot of uh, studies are carried out so uh, in nutshell i will say um, uh, the thermal and fluid flow studies plays very key role in the design development and operation of launch vehicles and space infrastructure and really uh, they have played a very key role and they are playing very key role and isro roadmap includes ambitious programs like gaganyaan chandrayaan 3 aditya l1 heavy lift and reusable launch vehicles thermal and fluid flow community needs to play greater role in the coming years in fact lot of gap areas are there in the thermal and fluid flow area i easily told that uh, for example stratification studies really Uh, between the theoretical and the actual thing lot of gap is there we have to bridge lot of gap in fact lot of gap is there today i have not addressed even one can address that area alone what is the gap between our understanding to reality that itself can be a separate talk so lot of gap is there so really this community has to play a very crucial role in the coming years i am very happy this heat and mass transfer conference organized by uh, indian society of heat and mass transfer in association with uh, american society of thermal and fluid flow engineers is a very good platform for bringing the experts from r&d academy and industries together to contribute in this very crucial area uh, thermal and fluid flow analysis 
in the area of space program of course you will be addressing all other areas but this is one of the area i have talked so this area also you will be in a position to contribute heavily i request the organizers to really uh, at one point of time understand the gap between the theoretical studies versus reality so that the coming years we can bridge the gap in a very to a very very thin uh, level so that will be a great contribution by this community and truly i am extremely happy that uh, uh, this team the fluid flow and thermal team plays a very it is a multidisciplinary area chemical engineers mechanical thermal everybody contributes in this area very very uh, great contributions done and a lot more has, can be done by this community with this uh, i think i have come to the last portion of my talk uh, on this occasion uh, let me thank the organizers for giving me this great opportunity to share a couple of my views uh, to this very august audience in a very short time of uh, 45 minutes uh, thank you thank you very much thank you dr narayan for a very informative and exciting lecture there are a couple of questions from audience i'll just uh, read out those questions I think that I have so Mr. Seshadri, he has a question on the quality of thermal insulation. Suppose the hydrogen at twenty kelvin and oxygen at forty kelvin in the tank, with insulation is exposed to ambient temperature of thirty degrees Celsius. What is the approximate rate of temperature rise in the tank with respect to tank? Yeah, see, uh, actually, uh, you know, the uh, inside the tank, uh, we are continuously depleting the propellant, so we estimate. the um, two aspect we estimate the end what is the type of temperature rise and what is the type of stratified layer and outage uh, actually the temperature rise is very very less uh, i will say the useful propellant temperature rise is our uh, permissible number when you load 20.3 kelvin up to 23 kelvin it is permissible the temperature rise is something around 1.5 to 1.6 kelvin and second thing is the stratified layer propellant outage our estimate was something around 75 to 80 kg but the actual number was around 60 kg is the type of number Okay. There is one more question from Mr. Papri Bhattacharji. He has asked a question whether there is any scope for nanofluid particles in rocket system propulsion. Yeah, of course, sir. This area, a lot of theoretical and experimental studies we have initiated, but slowly this is another important, interesting area. We are yet to reach a level of maturity. Uh, probably this question can be posted to me. I can send the answer. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now uh, this was uh, the endowment lecture. Uh, Dr. V. M. V. Krishnamurthy Endowment Lecture, and uh, there is an award, uh, a memento associated with this. And I am proud to announce that this memento has been sent to Dr. V. Narayan. So let us thank once again Dr. Narayan for a wonderful lecture. Thank you, sir. Uh, in your busy schedule, you were able to tell us a lot of things about the space program. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we close the lecture session now. Thank you.